Yeah, let's, let's start. Around. Let's kind of because we've got a lot to go through. I have. I'm I'm going to bask in the glory of the people that we've been able to assemble to, to discuss this kind of important kind of issue. I mean, we're talking about the role of on-site search in customer experience. The way I described it is almost like shining a spotlight on something that we don't necessarily always talk about. And we've got some really super interesting kind of research to share with you that, that Jan's going to share to tell you a little bit more about in a minute. But first of all, I wanted to introduce you to the panelists um, and myself, but, you know, before we get started. So I'll start with myself. My name is Adrian Swinsko. I am a I guess an advisor, an author, a general explorer, an agitator, an advocate for better service and experience. Um, and I'm joined today by, and I'll go one by one, by first off, can the Claire boss, Scott, big wave, can the Claire, can you tell us, kind of introduce Hello. yourself and tell us about you, uh, tell us a little quickly about yourself. Oh, hi, everybody. I am actually uh, French, but I'm based in Jersey. It's a little island between France and England. I have been doing CEX and EX for 12 years. And of course, my service has always been mystery shopping. So I'm kind of uh, looking at this from uh, a, a little different angles. And then we, we just all share some love about CX. So I'm looking forward to the conversation today. Awesome. Thank you, Claire. And next, I'll go to uh, Naeem Araf. Hi, Naeem. How are you doing? Please uh, hello, introduce everyone. yourself. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name's Naeem. I'm from uh, Birmingham, England. Uh, I'm a business consultant, transformation consultant. I'm also a practitioner. Uh, my interest is in the retail and hospitality sector. Awesome. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks, Naeem. And next up, Tim Hughes. Who we kind of we decided we're going to kind of like we're going to dress the same today, have the we, same sort we of style did, yeah. and specs, and and kind of like and, and top. So, Tim, my brother, kind of like, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, yes, I'm Tim Hughes. Um, I'm famous uh, mainly for writing the book "Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Change Makers," and that's what I'm famous for. Ah, perfect. And so next, I'm going to come to Elise Cavedo. Hi, Elise, how are you doing? Hey, Adrian. Hey, everybody. My name is Elise Cavero. I'm an author, a speaker, advisor, and a storyteller of anything tech and anything that has a story to tell. So if it's interesting, I want to know about it and I want to talk about it like we're doing today. Awesome. Thanks, Elise. And then next, I'm going to come to Claire, who loves adventure. Hi, Claire. Tell us about yourself. Hi everyone. I'm so Claire Musket. I'm also based in the UK. I'm a practitioner. I had 15 years working on the business side up until I was head of CX at Sainsbury's. Um, in more recent years, became a consultant and keynote speaker. And this year became the founder of Women in Customer Experience, the world's first online membership community for women in CX. <laughs> awesome. Thank I love you, the shout outs there. Like <laughs> <laughs> and Finally, I'm going to come to Nico Bukes, who's kind of our representative from um, YEX today, who's have helped kind of like sponsor and support all this research. Hi, Nico. Kind of yep. introduce yourself to the crowd, please. Hi, Adrian. Nice to see everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, yes, yeah, so I run uh, Northern Europe, Middle East, South Africa, and Australia for a company called YEX. It's a search business. And I just think search is the most exciting application on the internet. It's so it's going to govern our lives. It's already controlling our lives. And I think it's going to be such a, a, a huge part of everyone's, every facet of their lives moving forward. So good to be talking about it. Excellent. Um, and finally, I'm going to come to Jan, who is our, I feel like here's our su supreme leader today, because <laughs> he's been in, kind of involved in sort of like putting all this together, working with the acts, kind of getting it all um all kind of set up. He's also going to be involved in the mirror sort of conversation that's going on in France because there's two things going on simultaneously. So Jan, um, Jan's also going to kind of share with us the highlights of the results. So Jan, can you, before you kind of get into the, dig into the results, do you want to say, introduce yourself and sure. um, and say hello to the, to the crowd? Yeah, hello to you all. Welcome to this session. My name is Jan Gouvenek. I'm based in Paris. I uh, lived uh, in England also for a long time, um, and I have a, a long history in the internet business, uh, well, close to a quarter of a century now, and uh, I run an agency called Visionary Marketing, and I'm very happy to work with Yext on this subject of on-site search, which is dear to my heart because I was a customer for years on end, and I was a, a customer of this kind of technology as well. So. Awesome. So, Jan. Yeah. Drum roll. 
Uh, absolutely. Do you want to kind of like share the kind of the, some of these headline results with us? Because it's like I actually think I'm really excited about some of the results that came out because they're both interesting, but also a little bit confounding as well. Absolutely. Um, and so let's get stuck into them. Let me just uh, reorder my windows here. Well, um, just uh, looking at time because I, I'm also the timekeeper at the same time. So, and I've only got 10 minutes to take you through uh, this report, which is, uh, which is uh, quite comprehensive. Actually, we've got a 15 page report, which we'll uh, be very happy to send to you. Uh, and uh, this website search and customer experience report is, is the result of a survey which we carried out in the UK and also in France uh, towards the end of August and the beginning of September. Uh, we had 300 uh, marketeers, senior marketeers responding to this survey, 151 of which were uh, based in the UK. Um, so we are going to uh, look at some of the results. Um, and obviously here we, we're not going to detail, I mean, all the findings from this survey. We're only just going to go through the main ones uh, uh, and so that we can jump into discussions uh, as soon as possible. And obviously we'll make, it, uh, we'll make this report available to you after uh, the meeting. Um, number one finding um, is... We, we asked actually marketeers whether they found website search fairly or very strategic. And they were uh, quite adamant that website search is important. So that's good news to Nico, who thinks that this is the most exciting thing on earth, because it is, to marketeers, one of the most exciting things on earth. And one of the things that I was wondering at the beginning about these, these questions, and I was thinking maybe... Uh, uh, large businesses are going to be uh, more interested in that, and then smaller businesses are not going to be uh, that interested in this. And, and actually, our results are not showing this at all. Smaller businesses and larger businesses all think uh, that uh, website search is fairly or very strategic. Of course, we find slightly higher results in B2C uh, than B2B, and this is normal because obviously in this part of B2B, uh, which is not in complex selling, um, um, is, 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 rather, is rather small. So uh, B2C is more geared towards e-commerce, and it's not, it's not uh, surprising that B2C is more interested in, in where it thinks that uh, website search is more strategic. But yet B2B the B2B respondents didn't say that it, it wasn't strategic at all. It, it was just a little less, a little behind. Okay, so now that we've established that this is strategic, we've asked our uh, marketeers whether they think, whether they think that vis their visitors are using the website search function in their company's website uh, uh, to find information. And, and one of the reasons we asked this question is when I was a customer, uh, people would come to me and say, yeah, but nobody uses this. And so we wanted to check uh, and ask uh, the, this question and get the answer straight from the horse's mouth. And, and what we got is this number, 63% of our marketeers, and, and the numbers are quite consistent across the channel as well, uh, think that website search is used consistently by their uh, visitors. And this is totally consistent with another survey, which was carried out by EX and YouGov at the beginning of 2021, where uh, we found out that visitors themselves, consumers themselves, were quite keen on using uh, this, uh, this on, uh, website search function. So you, obviously, if you, if you read the report, you will get all the numbers and all the analysis that goes with it. Right, so this is strategic, and this is fairly used. Now, do people get frustrated with it? And yes, they pretty well do. Over 45% of our UK marketeers think that the visitors are fairly or very frequently frustrated with website search. Now, if we get back to this YouGov survey that I mentioned a little earlier, it's 62% of consumers who report that they feel rather or very frustrated 
Now, that's interesting because we, hear, we have a feature here which is deemed very strategic, which is fairly used. And at the same time, well, consumers not very happy with it. And let's face the music, marketeers are quite aware of it. Fine. Let's move on to the next slide then. Well, now that marketeers know that their visitors are not very happy with the kind of search function that they provide, what do they do? They understand what happens after that. And Elise has posted something on a LinkedIn account this afternoon, or was it yesterday, uh, about her personal experience. Maybe she can back, get back to it later. And, and she explained that when she wasn't finding something on the website then, and she wanted to buy something, then obviously she would go to other means and find it somewhere else. And overall, consumers, be it in France or the UK, are no different from Elise. They all go somewhere else. They all use other search engines. And well, you know the name. <laughs> they all go to, the, to Google most, most of the time. And obviously, uh, e-merchants will lose them to their competitors. So we have a fairly strategic feature. Uh, we know that it's fairly used. We also know that consumers are not very happy with it. And marketeers are also conscious of the fact that when they, their, their visitors are unhappy, well, they go somewhere else and find other products with other suppliers. Well, now that we know that, we've asked them what they thought about um, um, how an improved visitor's experience with regard to search would that have a, an impact on the trust that consumers have in their company? And they all agree with that. 79 plus percent uh, think that uh, uh, having a better search experience would improve their level of trust. So it's not just a matter of user experience. It's not just a matter of uh, finding uh, navigation on the navigation on the website pleasant. It's also a matter of business, a matter of trust, because obviously trust is business. And there's another question along this, uh, uh, along this route uh, where we asked them whether it would have a positive impact on their propensity to buy from their company. And obviously, this is sort of a mirror question compared to the uh, other one where visitors were unhappy and would go somewhere else to buy uh, stuff from other vendors. So yes, they do agree. They do agree as well that 70% of, of our UK marketeers that a better search experience would have a positive impact on their visitors' propensity to buy. So once again, it's not just a matter of UX. It's not even just a matter of customer experience. It's a matter of business. Bounds, dollars, and cents. Right. Now, having said that, the final result came to surprise because we, we have all the ingredients of a strategic decision here. We have something that doesn't work very well, which is very, very significant, important, and not just to marketeers, but to their customers. It is fairly strategic and it means business and it means money. And yet, when we asked UK marketers and actually, we had similar results across the channel, so that, that's reassuring. Over 81% of them find their website search engines fairly or very satisfactory. So uh, it's just the opposite of the uh, famous proverb, you know, when it's broke, don't fix it. Here it's broke, and they probably don't want to fix it. And we, we think here we, we have something, we, uh, a, a, a topic here for discussion amongst our uh, participants. And it's just nine minutes, so I think I'm spot on. I think you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, and, and I'm just like going, I'm sat here just going, because I see these results again, and I hear the, the, you know, the presentation, and I just go, <clears throat> right? So you've got people that are going, yeah, it's important. And yeah, we think it's pretty strategic. But yeah, we kind of like know our kind of customers are pretty frustrated about it. 
and we know that it's going to help us if we get it better. We know that it's going to help us um, build more trust and also improve propensity to the buy. But meh, we're kind of happy wherever where things are at. And I'm a bit like, meh. and their organizations talk to them, say, have this kind of rhetoric that, that, that goes on and they go like, oh, we're customer centric. We do all these things that matter. We're all about the customer experience and everything else. And you're like, I'm a, really? Which is why we titled this Marketeers, What the Heck's Going On? And so before we can get kind of into kind of the weeds, because we're going to need to get into the weeds, I think. And um, I'd like to just start with just a basic question. It was almost like do a bit of a kind of like a straw poll. We're going to think about like, well, do you think on-site website search plays a role in customer experience? And I tell you what, I know that we're going to, we've got quite a lot of people kind of here on the on the panel. What I want to do is just as from a housekeeping perspective is if we can try and keep our you know responses to like a minute or something so that we can go get through all this, we can get like a, a load of responses, a load of insight, a load of intelligence. So first of all, Claire, can I come to you first? I mean, website search, rolling customer experience. Give me, give me the four one one. Yeah, for me, it's really kind of a, a search tool is just another touch point within, you know, the customer journey. And therefore, it needs just to be as efficient as everything else. So the more consistency in that seamless experience during the customer experience during that visit, it really will increase trust. It will increase them feeling valued and really increase their loyalty. They'll buy from you. They'll recommend you. They'll come back to you. Awesome. I mean, that's kind of great. Uh, so another piece of house, housekeeping, maybe for the for the um, for the panelists, but also for the the people that are attending. Uh, attending. If you're attending and you have a question, then put it in the kind of chat. Yan will monitor it. We'll try and get it to to the end. And on the panelists, if somebody said something that you go, ooh, 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 I want to kind of like speak, then just put your hand up, and I'll try and keep an eye on all that. But I want to come to the most excited man in search next to get his perspective because he's self-proclaimed the most excited man in search nico i mean the role of search in customer experience i mean yeah how big so, well look um let's think about human behavior um there's a term nomophobia uh, we are addicted to our mobile phones nomophobia is the fear of not having your phone with you uh, low um, wi-fi coverage or low uh, connection and you don't have battery power we're all a bunch of nomophobians, right? We are. Okay, so there we go. You got a phobia. You didn't even know it. Um, the search engines and voice devices are changing our lives. People said voice devices wouldn't take on. Um, we've got devices is embedded in our life. So our search strings are getting longer and it's getting more conversational without us even knowing. You know? So um, Google is, is having a major impact on our life. What I think is happening is traditionally CMSs has been designed in a certain way and they have keyword search on it. And let's face, keyword search sucks. You type in five, <laughs> five, you type in five uh, keywords, it's going to find a, a, this bundle of keywords in a document, it brings it back, it's got nothing to do with your question. So I, I think um, it, is, it is a movement towards having a Google-like search experience on, on, on a website. And I think, and I think it's, it's really happening because I I'm telling you, if someone comes to a website after you bought them from Google, they can't find what they're looking for, you know where they're going? They're going back to Google. You have to buy them back or worse, you lose them to a competitor. So I think it's a movement. I think it's a lot of education, um, but it's, it's most certainly something that is happening. And I don't think we can stop it. It's like voice engines, voice Excellent. devices. I mean, I think that's it's right. I mean, I actually think about it for, you know, Claire, you talked about touch points. We talk about kind of touch points on journeys. And I know it's the expression that I've kind of used is that if people are starting at Google or Bing or kind of whichever, you know, dot, dot, go or kind of whichever search engine they're at, and it's almost a bit like it's optimized for their use. And it's like you're barreling down this kind of like three carriage kind of like motorway. And then it directs you to a site and then boom, you're almost like, and that site doesn't work as well as your reference kind of points, then it's a bit like going 70 miles an hour down, down a motorway straight into a country road. And it's like, that's kind of crazy. It's almost a bit of a shock. And you don't wonder they'd opt to go back on the kind of the motorway. But Jan, you probably you alluded to something that Elise kind of put on um, her LinkedIn about this video and her own experience, because something I wanted to kind of move on to kind of like, to like bring this stuff to life. 
in terms of we can talk about it, meh, it's not great. But actually, when we start telling stories about it, about what actually happens, then we actually start to really understand the real kind of issues. And so at least you were you shared a video where you talked about your experience. Can you kind of like do a replay on the not the video? Because that was because <laughs> I had mood music in the background, but just tell us a story. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the thing is that I was going to record this video and before I recorded it, I was trying to buy something from a website that I haven't purchased from, I would say, five or six years. And I wanted the help section because I couldn't find what I was uh, finding. And to be honest, the bottom line is it was a disaster. There was nothing and their help. Uh, yes, they have an FAQ at the bottom, but not extensive enough. And then I go to the search box, the magic search box, and I type in help. So I would imagine that when you type in help on a website, you would have a few links. But in this case, it was literally not a zero sales. Like it just said no result. That was it. So for me, <laughs> I'm thinking, are you kidding me right now? So close window, open new one. I went to Google and I went to another website to buy the product and then I recorded the video for this event. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it is just people think that the website search is not important. It is because you will lose customers. Uh, that's that, perfect. Yeah. I mean, I I completely understand that. I did a bit of a test and on one of the biggest fashion re retailers by size they're pan-european not uk they're a european continental european brand and went in and typed in help and then got a whole bunch of results like three hundred and thirty thousand plus kind of results and then i thought I'll, I'll type in something a bit more specific i'll type it i'll type in customer service and you, you know what the first research results were a series of white trainers who knew <laughs> and it's crazy right and it's ridiculous. The it's, thing um, is that if people don't understand, Adrian, that if you have good website search, you will keep your customers. It's exactly what Nico said. And I'm so glad that you guys did this survey because the results are absolutely incredible. And if all we do is get people to talk about this a little bit more, then maybe they will understand how important this is. Yeah. Um, Claire, can I come to you kind of first? Because I think you're bursting with stories. <laughs> that does sound like me <laughs> um yeah so I've got a couple so the, the first one was that actually I never really thought about this as a touch point in customer experience until we started having this conversation initially last week and then I just kind of like had my eyes open then to my own kind of customer experiences and one in particular stands out for consistently bad search is actually trying to find a holiday when you're on site so what really struck me was Google was taking me to sites that filled the search criteria that I was looking for. Then I get onto the site and I then plug in the same things that I was looking for. And it would take you to pages that just said no availability. So even though it was being kind of like advertised on Google, as you can choose us and go here, but it, it didn't seem to be like one site that was worse than others they were all consistently really really bad so as yet I've booked my flights but have not booked hotels for my holiday happening in a week's time like it's a little bit more about me I'm quite last minute on these things <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's, oh, that's brilliant I mean sorry you were gonna go you were gonna say oh yeah and then the, the, the other well, I think it's kind of like it's kind of three parts to this then so so then I then I looked at my own website and ours for women in CX is actually an external website that's just packed full of content so um, if you searched a specific term on Google, you would probably find something from us, but the search terms are so competitive, aren't they? For something like customer experience might not get found. And then I, I thought to myself, why the hell am I not having search on our own website? So when we've got like a really active audience, if they're looking for content around a specific subject, they could find it. Um, and I realized that my navigation, because we, we're in this kind of content paradox where we've got so much content now, we've got better and better and better at delivering really amazing content. The navigation just won't take you where you want to go. You'd have to like look at everything in a list. I was like, oh, how did I not, not think of this? So immediately put web um, search on my own website. And then um, I guess the, the, the final part was just then back in the day when I was working in retail, just it really standing out to me when we realized what customers searched for and how bad our results returned were. 
So even things like spelling bread without an, an E or an A or something, like you would never still find bread. So it hadn't, there was no intelligence around search learning for what common search terms were and then being able to kind of react to it but for a business of that size and scale that is a hell of a lot of lost sales so I think there's kind of like the b2b we're creating all of this content it might be found by SEO but in these competitive markets search is going to be advantageous on your website to be able to provide a, a more value from the resources that we're putting out in terms of marketing from a shopping and econ point of view it just makes sense but it needs to be intelligent and then yeah, yeah i don't really know what to do about holidays but geez <laughs> <laughs> any suggest- opportunity for yex <laughs> any suggestions kind of put them in the chat box kind of claire's completely open to suggestions but so there's two things in there claire that i wanted to pick up on but not with you but i want to kind of direct it to other people so you talked about being it being useful for people, but for a variety of kind of people. And you talked about, you know, and you talk, talked about being in Sainsbury. And Naeem, I wanted to come to you because you're unlike kind of like uh, some of us who are on the outside trying to help kind of people. You're on the outside trying to help people, but you also run your own business as well. And you were telling me about how search is actually kind of used not just by customers, but also by staff and stuff as well. So kind of tell us about the importance of it from your perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, much to Claire's point, we, we've we got so much content on our websites and people are coming into store looking for products. They can't see it. They ask us as, um, you know, people on the shop floor, can you tell me where this product is? We then have to go for search for it off the shop floor. Um, having that search facility, which is intuitive, is really important. It's a real critical part of that buying process. Um, and certainly we're seeing in a lot of our stores uh, where customers are, in store they're not asking a salesperson for information they're going straight to your website whilst in store looking for some products looking for some offers looking for some technical information Um, and they can also be in your store looking at competitors as well so everything we've talked about is is completely relevant and what i'd say is uh before the pandemic uh per store we'd have about two to three hundred searches a day Uh, during the pandemic we'd have about six thousand because they couldn't come into the store or ring anybody. And the trend hasn't now gone back to the 200. The trend is now still a thousand. So people are now used to searching your website and they're used to using it as a sales assistant. So you as a business need to think of it as a sales tool. Yeah, perfect. Uh, that's awesome. Kind of, Nico, I see your hands kind of go up. Yeah. Can, I, can I just kind of come to kind of like Tim first then I'll come, and then I'll come back to you. So Tim, I wanted to ask you about something that you shared about, because you talked about um, the variety that we've got to get our arms around when it comes to searching. You talked about market and meerkat and how there's the, that derivation from there, thereof. And so that's something we have to be, a bit, we have to be mindful of as well. And, and, and I guess that's where we can ask can Nico to comment on this, where intelligent search can can help with that but explain to me about the variety side of things yeah i, I think that um, um there's many of us who can't spell um and um um and and the, the famous one is is um in the uk we have this thing called um um in terms of the meerkat so um but what we have is that the um uh we have a, an insurance company which is um compare the market um, and, but because people can't spell market, um, they were typing in compare the meerkat. And then what that turns into is a, this um, advertising campaign of compare the meerkat. And then every, actually everybody knows them as the meerkats rather than the compare the market. Um, and I have a friend who sells jewellery to more people who can't spell jewellery than can spell jewellery because it's it's easier to bid for um, uh, words, misspellings than it is for jewellery. So, so. I mean, one of the things we have to do, Adrian, is think about, you, you know, you ask for, can you give me practical examples? And, 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 you know, we all go to websites. We all can't find anything. And search is so important. But we also need to make sure that we're looking out for people who can't, can't spell like me. Awesome. I mean, Nico, you were kind of wanted to kind of jump in there because I also wanted to kind of understand a bit thinking about how do you kind of account for some of the variety and stuff in the intelligent kind of search as well? I mean, it, it takes um, it it takes a, a while to learn algorithms that intelligence that if a if if a word is spelled in different variations that it automatically assume that that it's the closest to that correct spelling. So there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. 
Um, they, there's a, a, it doesn't Google's algorithm doesn't just work as brilliant as they did. There's a lot of years that went into uh, there's there's a human uh, bank of engineers that make sure that you can say that if you spell it this way, it should be uh, it should just assume that it is jewelry. So there's there's a lot there's a lot behind the scenes that go on. Um, but from um, you know, there's a couple of applications for search. The one is conversion. You know, um, someone come to your website, you want to make sure you give them the best experience. Of course, when someone click on, 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 on the search result on Google, they are going to go straight to that web page that give them everything that they need. No one's ever going to need to click around your website. I mean, that's the first mistake because as soon as people click around, um, they, they might get frustrated. They go back to where they came from. The other one is, is analytics. I mean, the, the, Google has got the, the, the power that Google have over us because of our search strings. Actually, go search afterwards. Um, no one lies to their search engine. It's true. It's a real thing. I mean, there's so much content about it because everyone types whatever they want on their search engine incognito. That must be a real feast to see what happens there. After, uh, the, the Brexit vote happened on Thursday. On Friday, the, the biggest search terms in Google was, who is the, uh, what is the EU? bit late for that. Another one was um, uh, that uh, George Osborne, the then chancellor, um, is George Osborne married? I mean, I don't know who thought of that, but imagine the data that you can get if, if people are typing stuff on your, on, on, on your website in free term, in, in free text. The, the, the one point I want to get to support, um, I mean, I, I tried to book a, a, a flight out recently on a call center. I mean, it was a long wait, and it's not their fault. Everyone's trying to do it. Call centers, we, we, try to, we know that sometimes we have to call them, but we're kind of allergic to them because you, you know you're going to wait a while. So everyone wants to self-serve. Um, the most amount of calls that go into a call center, you know the contents on the website, just no one can find it. So the, one of the best applications for search is just make sure that all your FAQs are found on your website and you save 200,000 calls into your call center. And I, I think there's so many different cool things you can do by just giving people the answers easily that they want on site. Hey, Nico, I think that's um, that's great. I mean, and, and I completely echo what you say about kind of the application of search and the importance of search in service and support and 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 and, and help and particularly self-service because there's an old piece of data and it's been around for a while that says that approximately 60 percent of all calls into your contact center come about because people can't find what they're looking for on your website so here's the here's the news ladies and gentlemen if you want to talk call deflection then work on content and work on search you know, before you even get to chatbots and anything else, it's like work on those two things because people know what they, they, they have a question. They just need help finding it. Kind of that's it. And that would be the best thing that you can, you know, that you can ever do. And then you can amplify from, from there. Which is really interesting, Adrian, because really when you're looking at those results and the first impression that you've got on those results, it's like, 80% of, you know, the marketers thinks that their website is fine and their search engine is fine. And in actual fact, six out of 10 customers find it frustrating. Can you imagine a frustrated customer will not just only go and buy somewhere else, but it's going to tell the world. It's become a real saboteur for your company. He'll go on social media. He'll tell his friend and family. So it's a real there's a real misconception of what you know what their search engine is and the capacity of, of it and what they're doing for their customers really really interesting yeah so uh, i mean so i think we've established the kind of like where they're kind of what we're, what we're dealing with here and the importance of it uh from kind of customers and effectiveness and all these different sort of things now i think we get we need to get into the meat of it is What's going on? Kind of like why, if marketers recognise the importance of it, but are doing little about it, but a little about it, then what is going to going on? I mean, Elise, got a view on this? Can you help us, please? Sure. I mean, there is something actually because uh, again, this report. And by the way, I want to give a quick shout out to to this report because. It was very comprehensive. So well done to the team uh, for the research. Now, part of their research touches on how COVID has accelerated the pace of this digital transformation in all industries. And exactly what you're saying, Adrian, why isn't everyone 
taking action. And based on my personal experience, I say that a lot of meetings happen, they talk about it, a lot of strategies written down, basically lots of blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to action, they don't actually do anything. And to be honest, I would like to ask Nico about this as well, because this is for me, it starts from the sea level. Marketeers have a job, whether we are advisors, marketeers full-time like Naeem or like most of all on this call, we are only able to do so much when we give advice to companies, when we tell them you should improve this part. But at the end of the day, there is always the big boss that has to say, let's go do it. And what I've seen over the last few years is that yes, this is why marketeers now say, or I believe they say, oh yeah, 84%, we're happy. Yeah, it looks good. Because I think they've become a little bit like COVID desensitized to taking action. And for me, this has been the frustration. I, I get to travel a lot. I'm Spanish by birth, so but I'm based out of the UK. And in the UK, I get very frustrated because there is a slower moving pace of business and of taking action. So for me, that's, that's the essence. We are not taking action fast enough. We talk too much, but we don't act. And I would like to have that question for Nico because he's at the realm of working with top people on this. Is that the case? Um, the, you know, if you, if you look at the big content management solutions, Sitecore, Adobe, I mean, those are the two big, big beasts within this, and Braco, there's many others. Uh, websites are built in a certain way. They've been built in a certain way for 20 years. Um, and, and that is just the, the norm. Um, typically, when you had a, a, a site search solution, it was like the last place that people would go to if every, everything else failed. You go down the drop down menus and that's the last place you try. Um, and, 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 I, and I think um, with the, the rise of Google and self search and, and voice engines, that, that will change. I, I just think it's a, it's a mindset shift. Um, most of the um, site search technology that was out there was, was keyword based. I mean, it's just, it's, it's frustrating. It's the type of thing you get on, on your council website when you try and see when the green bin gets collected. It's going to tell you that you need to uh, do something completely different than get a green bin. But um, it's, it's, I, I, I do think it's just a, a mindset. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that we are now the, the, um, the partner for Adobe where we put our site search on their, on, on their websites um, because people know that you, you just can't get it around it anymore. There's so, so many applications from uh, for search. But, um, you know, the, the, the people at the top, the, the, the C-suite, um, I think there's a resistance to change there as well. You know, if it's worked in the past, if you change something on the digital front of your business and it doesn't work, it's fear. Because now in a lot of cases, that's the only way you can talk to customers. Uh, and, and I think fear is preventing change in a lot of cases. So thank you for that, Nico. I still want to stick with this a little bit longer because I think this is like the nub of the kind of the problem here. And so I want to go to Claire because Claire Muscat, because recently, Claire, you've been in house. You talked about working for Sainsbury's or Whitbread and, and a bunch of other sort of big organizations. And I want you to cast your mind back and sort of like think about some of the barriers to change that marketers are going to have to go through. So maybe there's a cognizant, they're cognizant of this, but they're not doing much about it. I mean, give us your view on what you think gets in their way or what do they need to navigate? And then I also want to work, kind of come to Tim after you as well, because I wanted to um ask Tim because Tim works for big brands and then I also want to drop down as well because I want to talk to uh, Naeem because Naeem you work with you've got you're in a small business and how do you kind of like a kind of get that going for a small business as, as well as well as big business because so I really want to dig in on this a little bit because I think this is a really important part of the uh, uh, of the problem so there's our order Claire you're first off the rank as it were kind of really? give it to us yes I think it's one of those classic doesn't really belong to anybody typical customer experience okay. fall, falls between the lines and no one really kind of takes care of it or owns it because I guess marketing's perspective is more about how do we advertise and personalize and get people to the site and and even kind of like in website the, the teams probably aren't necessarily thinking that much about um, this is a 
customer experience or product development question. So like I said, you know, I just never really thought of it. And if I'm a customer experience practitioner with like multiple platform based businesses and hadn't ever considered it, I'm sure <laughs> right. um, that's a universal kind of challenge. But also if they're not measuring it, I've never seen it appear on a KPI. And if it's not tied to any business outcomes that have been discussed today, probably not seeing it. So I think it's possibly just a lack of like think, you know, thinking about it in the first place. But if marketers yeah. did, they probably find a home for it. I mean that's a that's a I mean that's a great point. I mean Tim, is that does that does that echo with your own experience? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, uh, there's a great piece there put in the chat by uh, Susanna, um, which um, is, is worth having a read, which is the, you know, I'll, just the, the first sentence. Companies don't invest in, in the companies do not invest in proving what they don't measure. Yeah. Uh, and isn't that isn't that the case? But I agree with uh, Claire, which is that you tend to have the website is 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 the web team. And that's about content and 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 your catalog and and or the the, the details about the the uh, the company and the uh, the founders. And then marketing is about getting people to the website. There doesn't seem to be any discussion or debate about what we do with with people when we get to the website. And if there is a discussion about bounce rate in terms of people arriving and then leaving again, it's because the content's bad. Mm. And I forgot, I forgot to mention, so possibly also like a lack of analytics. Yeah. And then on the platform that you built it on, do you actually get any information back out? It might just be a kind of search function, but you can't learn anything from it. Yeah. So perhaps there's just a bit of a gap there. But yeah. I, I I think that, you know, with, with as as the, the way that we often look at things will be different because we work in the in the environment, because we may be in marketing or things like that, we look at it with different eyes. And it's so important to get people um get my mother to come and have a look at your website because you know and I just use her as a metaphor for all mothers or all people that are not particularly um, very good at using websites um, and get them to look at it rather than necessarily get somebody who uses websites all the time yeah and Naeem I just wanted to kind of come to you because not just because you run your own your own smaller business because but you work across the gamut of kind of businesses kind of big brands but also run your own uh, big brands but and also advise a bunch of smaller kind of businesses as well is like what what kind of like what's your perspective i mean in terms of how do we get some movement on this and kind of like to drive some change because we know it matters right yeah so um our 72 stores across the country doing 70 million pound uh, a year uh, so it's, we are quite a massive brand um and um the thing for us is we were one of those brands that two years ago felt that you couldn't you couldn't go online you know carpets you got to touch and feel it right covid thankfully thankfully covid shook that off us and a lot of other businesses have, have made that transition covid that was one of the positives out of covid um the thing for me is that now people are coming out of that um that, uh, that imposter syndrome that we can't sell on, online or can't sell virtually. I think the big implication of these results is the fact that people are now realizing that they've got to have search, right? We all talked about this, we all know that. But the next step is, the other thing that we've alluded to is that search has got to evolve. So like the spelling mistakes, we know from Google Analytics, we get a thousand plus hits a day on a gray carpet near me, okay? Ridiculous ridiculously simple but we never put anywhere in our search originally this is a gray carpet and we never geotagged any of our stores so a learning point we fixed it great we saw the spike in sales and for me it's it's got to be you know this this research backs up the fact that businesses need to use the data as other people have said and they've got to evolve and the evolution's got to be quick we're no longer talking about your six month nine month projects these are six days nine days transitions we've got to get into that position and whether you're a small business, in which case you can make that decision quickly, you've got a smaller bus- uh, budget, whether you're a big business, in which case, you know, as, at a board meeting, we have to make that decision quickly. You've got to make that decision quickly because mm-hmm. those six, nine day decisions, if you if you take six to nine weeks and months, that's six to nine weeks and months of revenue you've lost. So I think we some of us knew this. A lot of people knew this. What this what these research is doing is really giving evidence to that business case to uh, to have that mindset. That's perfect. And um, I sort of underestimated the size. I didn't know you had 70 stores. Blimey, 70 story, man. 
you're a bigger beast than I thought you were. I knew you could have like you were in the double digits, but not seventy crumbs. So, and and a great kind of impact on the on, on, on change things. So, be conscious of time before Jan gets on my case. Some quick final words, summary thoughts. I'm just going to go kind of around everybody. So, Claire, Boss, Scott, can I come to you first? I mean, give me the headlines. Give me the kind of do yes. this. Anytime that your customers can't get what he wants from you, he'll go to his competition. So anytime you're losing money, you're losing revenue, you're losing customers, you're losing loyalty. It's just a, a very, very simple business mindset. For me. Perfect. Thank you. And so I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to come to Tim next. So I, I found some research from Gartner. Uh, this is for B2B. 76% of customers do nothing after a digital experience with you. And what we're trying to do is, as practitioners is actually get them to have some sort of action. If we've got them to a, an asset of ours, whether it's a piece of content, whether it's a website, we're looking for action. And 76% of people don't take any action. That's pretty dummy. Crumbs. Even if you improve that by 10%, imagine the yeah. impact. Yeah. Well, Nadim with his um, grey carpet near me. Yeah, that's awesome. Just simple sort of stuff, but they just insight and then to action and then and then on to on to results. Um, Elise, some final summary thoughts. Sure. Um, we live in an age where e-commerce websites have evolved from a one pager or just a few categories to hundreds and thousands of products and services within one domain. So if it's not done right, you will lose customers. Remember everybody, we live in an era of super fast. We want it now. And if we cannot find it within seconds, we will go somewhere else. Awesome. And Blair Muscat. Yeah, I guess I'd just be thinking about going back to kind of contact center data and looking at how many calls we're receiving that could be deflected by just having better search I loved your point Adrian um, you know this isn't about AI and chatbots and really expensive innovation it's a really simple change that can uh, increase sales and reduce cost to serve like why wouldn't you go after that but as with every initiative that falls into the realms of customer experience or in between the gaps there has to be a kind of business outcome that you can tie it back to so I have a little poster ooh, here ooh, 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 behind my head, which has got a heart on it and it says basics underneath in graffiti. And that's kind of the point, I think, is like be brilliant at the basics, but take ownership of it because you understand that this can drive real kind of results. And so before I come to Nico for the kind of the last kind of word on this, I want to go to our farmer, our supreme leader that's in the background because he's been listening to the discussion. And I want to ask kind of Jan, I mean, Jan, what's your thoughts on this? What do you, what, how would you sum up this discussion? Uh, it's, it's a funny discussion because it's, it's very straightforward. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I'm still very puzzled. And uh, there's this question I, I will direct to Nico, uh, if I may, because um, we, we, we've all seen uh, that uh, marketeers are aware that there is a problem. Well, consumers are well aware that there is a problem. All everybody around the, this round table agrees that there is a problem. Uh, some of us, like Claire Muscat uh, at uh, Sainsbury's, if I remember well, uh, realized in the field that there was a problem. And at the end of the day, there is no action, as Elise said. And and also, uh, there is there is precious little said about this this thing. I mean, it looks like this this survey that we've done is is probably one of the only ones about about this subject. There there isn't much data about it, and there is not. And as uh, Susanna said, there is not much measurement either. So what would be required to make things move? But before I, I hand the floor to uh, uh, Nico to to address this question. Uh, maybe I'd like to add uh, my perspective as a former client, because I, I manage websites and I actually used to do this for Orange and Orange Business uh, worldwide for many years. And, and, and I was frustrated as well. I mean, everybody was frustrated with this web, website search engines, on-site search engines, because we all knew they were really crap and that we were losing a lot of people. And, and actually, we 
even us internally were going to search engines to find you know the stuff that we were writing on our blogs because we couldn't find it it was very very frustrating and there was loads of things around this uh nico mentioned fear and resistance to change well there, there's there's more than that actually there's politics as well when you know when when technological choices are involved mostly in europe uh if you see what i mean um uh, the fact that you're being criticized all the time and that's uh that's very very it's very very hard to uh, make decisions in that context uh plus i mean it's a it's a it, in my particular case it was also a a huge technological change involved and a lot of investment and and that required uh backup and also not just backup uh, also a lot of a lot of drive from management and there wasn't any. Uh, so it, it, it was a bit of a, a lose-lose situation where you get criticized and it's very, very hard to mend it. Uh, so um, seen from the outside, it looks easy, but seen from the inside, it's a lot more difficult. So I don't know what uh, Nico thinks about this and, and mostly what could be done to uh, A, improve the measurement because Susanna, I think, has a very good point. Yeah. If we can't measure anything, then we can't actually prove anything. And, um, and you know, how can we get this ball rolling? Yeah. So, I mean, change is happening all the way around us. I mean, Netflix was a bad idea at some point. Uh, I mean, we would have thought that a bonkers series like Squid Game would be watched by mo- probably a lot of people on this. I mean, what a crazy idea, but people are watching it. Most watch show on, on, um, on, on, on Netflix. I posted a, a link in the chat. It's, uh, I'm going to use a very, very unusual example, Central England Co-op. I mean, they don't sell online. And, you know, this, this is, uh, when you look at the website, you know, um, it is a Yex customer, but the, they, they told us that so, website search doesn't work because they had a small search icon that was hidden away somewhere in the top right hand corner. So no one obviously would click on it because it wasn't visible. And we started to experiment. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 I'll give a, a couple of pounds to whoever can guess where on this website do most people uh, engage? You know, it's, it's, if, if you replicate uh, uh, something like, um, like, a UA, like, like Google, everyone goes to where they've been trained. It's human behavior. And um, do you know that th- they don't sell online? But they, they have found out so much about their customers. Payment methods that they haven't offered, payment terms that they haven't offered, different funeral plans that they haven't even thought of, that the competitors were, did, they didn't think it was popular and, and, and now they're doing it. Um, new product lines. They're even they're using the information, the analytics um, behind free text customer searches to open locations in, in new places. I, I think there's a certain mindset that um, website search don't work because it's that little icon in the top right hand corner that you hope no one clicks on because it's keyword search and it sucks. But, um, you know, if, if it's positioned well, and I use an unusual customer to show it, if it's positioned well and it's engaging and there's something there that help people, a starting point to think, um, it kind of becomes like a Google-like search feature on your website that you can use. Um, to very great effect. I, I think this will become a, a big thing. I, I do think websites will change to have this as a far more prominent part um, of their design moving forward, um, just as there, there'll be many other things changing around us digitally that, that is now only a concept that some very clever bloke is thinking about somewhere. Thank you, Nico. So we are getting near the top of the um, top of the hour, and we don't want to kind of run over. Um, but I just wanted to address sort of like one question that came in that, that you know prior to the um, to the kind of the webinar, and it's this idea. The question was asked is like, do you think this challenge, this issue, or this challenge is equally applicable to both B two C? of B2B rather, as it is to B2C, because most of the things we've been talking about are very B2C sort of stuff. And the answer is an absolute big fat yes in capital letters. I've worked with B2B clients, particularly that have this kind of complicated kind of like product portfolio, might be full of very, very technical and things. 
And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, search and being able to navigate kind of those kind of portfolios and getting access to the right sort of information, particularly when it's detailed and very technical, is a um, is absolutely essential. And so it's equally applicable, if not more applicable, to kind of like uh, to business areas where you've got a large degree of uh, technical complexity. So that was kind of the answer to that to that kind of question, kind of like two. But any other questions? Jan, have we missed any questions that we need to answer before we can like round everything off? Not that I know of, but I have maybe a question for Nico as well. Um, we, uh, I, I saw this mention of inside search rather than on-site search. Uh, is it just a new buzzword or what, what, what does it mean? And what is, what is behind? Is Yex part of inside search, by the way? Insights. I mean, uh, it, it, I mean, I'm I'm just ass making an assumption here, but there's um, there's intranet search that you can find. Uh, I mean, very applicable in, in big organisations. I don't know if insight search means it's only available to, within that organisation. Uh, I mean, big application for that. Um, that I mean, that's something that we see universities, big organizations, uh, there's a huge intranet with very sensitive information that people need access to very quickly. Um, so I, I, I don't know if that, that is the application, but there's definitely a use for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Susanna has a, a good, very good point again about B2B and B2C. Actually, one of the things that I didn't highlight in the, in the headline findings is that uh, uh, B2B is actually also part of our results where I thought in the first place that B2B would be, you know, out of scope and it's not. Uh, do you concur, Nico? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If you, if you buy a, um, say you buy a Samsung TV, um, who is paging through all that, the manuals and trying to find whatever language you're most comfortable in speaking, you Google it. So the big thing for Samsung and all the rest, I mean, we work with Samsung, is they take all that manuals, they structure it in a way that you can actually now read it very quickly. And you know where you search for it is, is probably on, on Google. And so, so they need to structure it in a way that if you ask the question on their website and on Google, Google, it's the same answer. So that's the, the next evolution, on-site search, but the answer, when you get the answer, is structured in such a way that the website crawlers can read it, understand that's an authoritative source that you also found when people are searching on other places. So B2B, massive application. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're now at the top of our top of the hour. So I'm going to have to kind of round it off and bring the proceedings to a close. We could have done this and talked about this for hours, I believe, and filled with probably a couple of drinks and some sandwiches and stuff. We could have probably gone on for days, you know, supplemented with a bit of accommodation and stuff. But what I wanted to say is thank you to Jan and his team at Visionary Marketing for conducting the research and organizing kind of everything. I want to say thank you to Claire Boscott, Naeem Arif, Tim Hughes, Elise Cavedo, Claire Muscat, and Nico uh, from Yax for sponsoring the research and, and, and adding kind of like his perspective uh, in here. Thanks to, you, to everybody else who's attended sort of today. Point of note, all of the input kind of here will be taken and put into the research that will produce a white paper which will have that be brought to life with some of the commentary and the insight and everything else so i think it's going to be a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. olivier who's also on this kind of call is a bit of a design genius is going to make it look very kind of like stunning and impactful but finally for me adrian swinsko i just want to thank everybody for your time your energy your insight and your enthusiasm today and for helping us shine a spotlight on an area that's not always looked at. I just want to say fair play. And thanks you to all and have a good day. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you guys. Bye, -bye.